Hey Roamers, today we're in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. And that's Scotts Bluff. On this episode, we're going to show you why Scotts Bluff, Nebraska is worth a stop. I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. Our destination was South Dakota, national parks, monuments, state parks, and bison. But to get there, we were going to cut through a small slice of Nebraska. So we watched some YouTube, like you're doing now, and realized that just driving through northwestern Nebraska was not going to happen. There's too much natural beauty, history, quirky things we had to see. Scotts Bluff National Monument, spelled as two words, is located in Scotts Bluff, the city, one word, and that became our destination. We had planned to boondock as much as possible this trip, but temperatures across the plains and much of the west were soaring this summer. So we needed to find a place with electric hookups so we could run our air conditioning. There are several public campgrounds in the area, and these are always our first choice. Most national, state, and city public campgrounds offer more spacious campsites and more natural beauty at a much lower price. We found a spot at Riverside Campground, which is located in a huge city park alongside the North Platte River. The Monument Valley Trail also runs alongside this river. For just $20 a night, our spacious site came with electric and water, and there's a dump station at the entrance to the park. There's also lots of dry camping sites for just $10 a night and a really nice bathhouse. Adjacent to the campground is a new playground and a large dog park. There's also a disc golf course and fishing ponds in the park. We'll put a link in this video's description. From our campsite, we could look up at the town's namesake, Scotts Bluff, 800 feet above us, and we made this our first destination. Towering above the North Platte River, Scotts Bluff has served as a landmark for peoples from the indigenous to emigrants on the Oregon, California, and Mormon trails, along with modern travelers. This landmark and nearby Chimney Rock, which we'll also visit in this episode, help to guide the pioneers to their destinations as well as to water. Scotts Bluff National Monument is free to visit, and the visitor center is excellent. Many interactive displays to keep the attention of younger visitors, and several rooms of exhibits on everything from the geography to the lives of those who've passed through. There's also a collection from artist and photographer William Henry Jackson, who helped capture the history of the United States with his works in the 1800s. Oregon Trail Pathway is a short trail just inside the park entrance where you can use your phone and QR codes to learn about the outdoor display and the short trail where you can imagine what it might have been like to travel the Oregon Trail in the 1800s. Welcome to the Oregon Trail Pathway. This easy walk will take you past our replica wagon. This was the area that people used to get from the east to the gold rush in California or to Utah. There was a Mormon trail here as well. Right, and then also Oregon to get to Oregon. So we're going to go see what those rutted trail looks like.
built in the 1930s, the awesome Summit Road is the oldest concrete road in the state, giving visitors a chance to reach the top without hiking. Keep in mind vehicles longer than 25 feet or taller than 11 foot 7 are not allowed on this road. Call ahead to see if the Summit Shuttle will be running the day of your visit. So the bluff that I'm walking on right now used to be the high plains, but through erosion, all that's left is what I'm standing on now and a few other outcroppings in the area. The overlooks at the top of the bluff offer short trails for beautiful views of the North Platte Valley below. an eighth of a mile and the trails paved. Sunflowers are so pretty. If you look down down in the valley floor down there you can see the trail it continues on up here so there's i guess just the one area where they had a little bit of a rock slide and they got to go in and clear that all the way we'd look forward to walking the saddle rock trail which begins at the visitor center and takes you to the top of scott's bluff it's only 1.6 miles but has an elevation change of 435 feet but there's a foot tunnel that was dug in 1933 that you pass through on the trail. At the time we were there, the tunnel was closed due to a severe rock slide. So we're walking on Saddle Rock Trail. It's kind of the trail we look forward to seeing here at Scott's Bluff the most, but they had a little avalanche here, I think last year, last winter. And so they're still not sure if it's, they haven't cleaned it up yet and they're still not sure if it's safe. So. There's a tunnel that you would have gone through and this would go all the way from the top of Scott's Bluff all the way down to the visitor center, but you can't go through now. So we only went down part way. We can see where the rock slide was right there. There was some stairs from the other end. When we're up on, from the bluff up there, you can see the tunnel and see where it's all cut off right now. I think it's kind of cool to go down it. It's kind of a bummer we can't do the whole trail, but yeah, we can do the top and then do the bottom if we want to later. If you're going to be in Nebraska, then you've got to try a Runza, the regional cuisine. It's been called as Nebraskan as corn husker football. German immigrants brought the recipes with them as they crossed the Great Plains, and one family adapted the recipe and the name from a German word meaning belly and opened the Runza Drive-In in Lincoln, Nebraska in 1949. Original Runzas are seasoned ground beef, onion, and cabbage pocketed in fresh baked bread. Now in four states, they'll ship frozen Runzas to your door. So this is a Runza, evidently native to here. Well, that just looks like a bun. It's supposed to be like a stuffed sandwich, but they slice it. And I got the mushroom Swiss. Good. You want to try? No. <laughs> 
23 miles away is one of the most famous landmarks of the American West, Chimney Rock. Travelers along the Oregon, California, and Mormon trails knew they were headed in the right direction when they came upon this rock formation. Designated as a National Historic Site, the Visitor Center and Museum here are operated by History in Nebraska, a nonprofit organization. This is not part of the National Park System. We put a link in this video's description for more information. We decided to drive to a nearby point where you can park and walk closer to the formation. When we were there, they were just completing a parking lot right next to the trail. In 1895, Chimney Rock was 355 feet from tip to base. In the last 150 years, the spire has lost 30 feet, currently measuring 325 feet. Natural weathering, erosion, and even lightning are to blame in cutting its height. In 2006, the Nebraska State Quarter was released to commemorate this pioneer journey through Nebraska. Across the road is the Chimney Rock Cemetery. The entrance sign reads, During the Western Migration through this pass, many died as they looked for a better life. At the entrance is a memorial for Mary Murray Murdoch, nicknamed Wee Granny. She had been traveling the Mormon Trail and her last words are etched in stone. Tell John I died with my face toward Zion. Wildcat Hills State Recreation Center is located on over a thousand acres in the nearby Wildcat Hills. The Nature Center contains educational displays and programs. Bird viewing is a popular activity here, and there's a large viewing area with several feeders and a view overlooking the North Platte River Valley. Other exhibits explore the past life of the Wildcat Hills through interpretive paleontology and archaeology displays. The Shooting Sport Complex is a family-friendly shooting sports education center with a focus on safety, education, and fun. It provides educational programming and quality instruction, and equipment rental is available. The park also offers primitive campsites and hiking trails, which was our reason for visiting. However, recent rains had caused a lot of damage that hadn't yet been repaired during our visit. So this is the Muley Trail, which we weren't really looking for. And it has not been maintained and it kind of dead ends in brush right there. And with rattlesnakes, we're not wanting to go through the brush. And this is the trail after rains. There's caution tape here that's been torn down. And this is supposed to be the Mountain View Trail the signs down. This is what we parked and this is the one they recommended. And it looks like there's beautiful views out there, but we don't want to walk through tall grass during rattlesnake season. So, going back to the car. We attempted several trails, but erosion and mud forced us to stop each time. We finally set out on the nature trail, which starts near the nature center and ends in the back of the center. There's a link in the description. Next week, our Nebraska visit continues. We'll be visiting Fort Robinson and Toadstool Geological Park. We also discovered the coolest roadside attraction you won't want to miss. Hey Roamers, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Roaming with Rosie. For more information regarding this video, please check out the links in the video description below.
as well as products and equipment we use and recommend. We sometimes do receive a small commission when you use our links for purchases, which is a great way at no additional cost to you to help offset some of our production costs. Thank you so much for watching and sharing our videos and subscribing to Roaming with Rosie. We'd love to hear from you and encourage your comments and questions. Until next time, see ya. Thank you.